Welcome to day two of Riot Fest. I'm backstage in the media area, which looks vaguely prison-like, but I assure you it's lovely. Carcoon Carne sponsored by SopelSolar.com, S-O-P-E-L, Solar.com. Brent Sopel, who used to be a Chicago Blackhawk, who was on the Stanley Cup winning team. Brent Sopel is going to help you switch to solar. There are tax credits floating around up there, both on the local and national level, that will expire at the end of the year. So now is the perfect time to get in on solar, save a bundle, nothing out of pocket. Just go through the consultation online. It's fun to do, and it could change your finances for the better. SopelSolar.com. Do you miss the 1990s? Do you miss all the great music from that period, grunge and punk and indie? Think about if you could time travel back to the 90s. Think about all the cool shows you could see, the pumpkins at the Avalon or at Lounge Jacks, or Wesley Willis, anywhere. Think about just being able to zoom back in time and hang out in the middle of Chicago's legendary music scene. The best way to time travel back? It's the new novel, 90 Days in the 90s, a rock and roll time travel story. It's the ultimate novel about the 90s and Chicago's music scene. Join record store owner Darby on her trip back to the 90s in, in Chicago as she jumps on the gray line to time travel back to her carefree 20s, soaking up all the pop culture and rock and roll nostalgia you could ever imagine. To learn more, go to 90 Days in the 90s, get a signed copy while you're there, signed by author Andy Fry, or just pick up the book on Amazon or wherever it is you buy books. Make sure you stay as close to the mic as you can. As yes, sir, I'll call you up. Right. Fine. <laughs> Stage you. style. All right, we are backstage at Riot Fest. Uh, I'm here with Brian and Mike from Bad Religion. Hi. Hello. Hello. One of the marquee players. One of the marquee players in punk rock. One of the marquee players here at Riot Fest. We got a big font. Font size is important. Oh, yeah. Font yeah. size is everything these That's days. Good. I don't need to tell you guys that. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you don't even need to go to the show. You just know, well, look at that font size. Yeah. Those They're, guys are big. Bad Religion is a big deal. Yeah. Politics has always been such a, a big part of your career, and certainly bad religion. At a show like Riot Fest, you're preaching to the converted. Like, they, they are ready to receive those messages. They're ready to receive what Greg's singing. Yeah. How do you reach the people who aren't listening to bad religion? Or is it just... Like last weekend in Pennsylvania. Uh, well, that was one way, exactly. We played a place in rural Pennsylvania, and I'm 100% sure that there were some election deniers and Q proponents and all sorts of fellas and ladies there. At a bad religion show. Yeah, because it was just, it was a festival environment like this, but a little okay. smaller, um, out on a, a, a Pony League baseball field uh, out, about an hour outside of Pittsburgh. And it was cool. It was real people. Right. You know, which, I mean, I, I, uh, I love the opportunity to share um, with people who may be suffering from, you know, brainwashing, misinformation. Uh, under the clutches of an evil empire to, whose only goal is to, to, to ruin their lives. So I'm, I'm here to help. Good. Well, I'm glad Bad Religion is here to help. You know, it's funny. I, I kept thinking over the past, let's call it six years, I kept thinking there would be more political, politically charged music out, coming out. Like, Bad Religion remains one of the standard bearers, but I, I feel like we haven't seen enough of it. Well, I don't know what... Uh, you know, there's... if, if you, I don't really know uh, if you're if you're half my age, how you consume political information. Yeah, you're 20. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, it could be, be it could be a generational thing to a degree because our parents were hippies, and all they did was like your point on earth is to express yourself this way. And I'm not sure people who are much younger than we are feel the same way. I mean, it's obviously their political views are personal, but maybe there's just that that activist part isn't there. You're both guitarists in the band that's what, what they say wait what's that give and take like between the two of you it's all take 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 with this guy <laughs> <laughs> i give him everything <laughs> i tried i tried i tried uh basically mike gives me a lesson every night because he's better than i am but i've been in the band longer so i get to do more things he's the lead guitar player that's how it works that's but he's far better um and i'm encouraging i'm uh, now you have to admit i'm constantly just like you do that so I'm <laughs> oh, yeah, when, him out. I, when i got in the band from the cult i went from playing the same three chords to like Oh, he, Brian's like, oh, you're you're going to be getting solos now, my friend, and I'm just like, oh, that's great, and he's like, oh god, like, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't solo in the cult? Oh god, no. Not once. Not. I was given one solo for an outro of a song, and that lasted for like half a tour. Then one night, I went to do the solo, and my boss just started playing the solo, and it was never spoken of again. <laughs> so it was, but you know, whatever. That was, you know, it. That was not my job. I will so, never do that. So, so okay. here it's like a twin guitar thing, I think. Talking about your cult history and. Uh, 
certainly, Brian, your history is, is, speaks for itself. You've got a fantastic li punk rock LinkedIn profile. You both still look like you're having a lot of fun on stage. You both, it's still a good time. What, what's the secret? What keeps, what keeps this exciting? What keeps you coming back to something like Riot Fest and doing what you do? Uh, well, gratitude helps. And also, uh, like, I like doing this more than anything. And my job is out, th yeah. out there is to do it the best I possibly can. And so that means I'm engaged with it. I'm, I'm, I'm completely immersed in what I'm doing. And like, I'm, I'm moving around because the music moves me. And I'm smiling because I love it. I mean, it's not like there's really nothing contrived about it. And I'm just, uh, you know, you're just seeing what happens. And I'm, I'm so proud that, uh, that somebody cares. I'm glad somebody's watching. Mike, is it the same thing for you? Yeah, and I, it's kind of, this festival might not be the same, but like when we do these European festivals, sometimes you'll be playing with like a German heavy metal band or, or like, a, like a rock band. I think we did one with Foreigner once. And I mean, I'll admit, I kind of like to go up there and be like, hey, heavy metal guys, check out the two punk rock guitar players yeah. who, who aren't too shabby. Yeah, keep our you chops know. sharp. Yeah. That's good. I'll show hey. you how it's done. And, and now we're competing with uh, seven seconds on stage, so we'll, we'll make this brief. Is Mike, in fact, the most fit performer at Riot Fest this weekend? Um, I couldn't hear you because seven seconds is playing. Is Mike the most fit performer on stage this weekend? Mike? 100 percent. 100 percent. Mike spends 18 hours a day pursuing his joy of fitness. Yeah, well, you know. Who's willing to do that? We're not getting any younger, man. You got We're not. <laughs> I mean, honest to God, man, I, I, when I saw the Rolling Stones, it was like, you know, Mick, maybe it's a little hammy, some of the, the stuff he does, but it's like, fuck, the guy's 70-something and is really good. And it's not an accident. All right, so it's been a minute. When do we get New Bed Religion? Um, well, a few more minutes, <laughs> I would say. Maybe an hour or two, and if you're... If you're using that frame of reference. In dog hours. Uh, I know that Brett and Greg have things they're messing around with now. And uh, we still have a lot of mess to clean up because of our COVID uh, stall. Because we had a lot of work to do and we need to go back and see our friends in those places before we can start on a new thing. So uh, probably next year we'll, we'll start thinking about it. One quick question for you. I hope you can hear me. Back, back in the day... When Minor Threat was a thing, and you were in Minor Threat, did you and Bad Religion exist in the same orbits? Were you aware of each other? Did you play with each other? I, I, I was aware of Bad Religion because I had a Bad Religion record. Um, I had How Could Be Any Worse. But I remember thinking that, you know, the singer is really good, but the band can't play. And, you know... I don't know why that came, you know, I, it's not like I'm here to fix it. I just thought that was a really funny observation for a band that I've been in for 28 years. And, hey, wait, I was wrong. They can play. Sorry. I was like 15. What did I know? Hey, and you're the you're the most recent addition. I mean, ja Jamie got in there after me. So now I'm... You're recent-ish. Yeah. Well, what's it like jumping on that moving train? It literally was like jumping on a moving train. It was... I wasn't used to, to getting on stage and being like C minus level. And it just, it, it really would like, if I missed a chord change, cause it, the songs had, they're very like songwritery songs. Like a modulation is not like a half step. It's like it modulates from G to D. So everything's different. And I was just shitting bricks and I'd get on stage and if I missed a change, it was like better, better luck tomorrow. Cause it's not gonna happen again tonight. <laughs> and I would come off stage really shaken. And Brian's like, you're gonna get this. You'll be fine. And am I? The right hand wasn't there yet. It was. Yeah. And then Greg even once was like, "Oh, there's a lot of clams there, Mike." And I was like, "Like I don't know. Like I was just, you know." We're not a nurturing organization. I was, I was hanging myself. But <laughs> no, it was it was daunting. And I did a whole Euro tour before I left the cult to join this because I wasn't gonna be like failing on the cult and get in here. And after six weeks, they're kind of like. Uh, you yeah. know, thanks for trying. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not working out. Here's a box. Uh, totally, take your belongings yeah, and go. It worked out beautifully. Yes. So it was, it was terrifying. Well, we love you here in Chicago. Great. That, that is a fact. You are one of the big font bands at Riot Fest this year. Big font. Okay. Well, it's, it's great to be back. I know we've played here so many times, I can't count it. And I think uh, I'm so grateful that they keep asking. 
and uh, every time it's fun. Every single time it's fun for us. So uh, good deal, good deal all around.